as a bass player, rocking up to a gig, a rehearsal studio, a live stream, a video shoot, any of those things, there's a bunch of essential stuff you need to take with you. The obvious thing, your bass, without that you'd just be a singer, yep, I'm talking about you. But what else should you have? Hi, I'm Twisty, bass player for the Reckless Empire. In this shoot, I'm going to take you through top 10 things that I carry in my go bag as a bass player. Just as a reminder, check out our YouTube channel for some covers, original songs, some other how-tos. Let's get into it. Number one is the bag. There's no point in having a bunch of cool gear if you can't carry around and stuff. Shopping bags just don't cut it. For years, I used to use a pedal board type box. The problem I had with that was when I opened it, everything was everywhere and I had to rumble through to get the bits that I needed. So recently, I've moved over to this mono gear bag. The reason I like this is it's backpack and as you open it up, you can get access to it in its upright position. It means I can get into stuff without having to roll on its back, tip it upside down, etc. Lots of pockets and some other functions. One of the other cool features of this is it has a removable back part, which basically creates a laptop bag inside another bag. For those of you traveling through airports, you can keep your laptop separate and then once you're through the airport scanner, you can put it all back together again. Number two, instrument cables. The bass will be very quiet if you can't plug it into anything. Wireless is great. I've been using Sennheiser for a while. For the last five years, I've been using Line 6 wireless products and they're fantastic. However, it's always good to have a backup. I keep these in my guitar case. That means when I've got a guitar, I've got a cable. With an Attitude bass, I've got two cables. However, that means if I'm using one of my BB series Yamaha basses, I've got a spare. Number three, a microphone. In these days of pandemic and COVID, it's always good to have your own microphone. I use a Rode M1. It's very similar in aspects to a Shure SM58. Bass player proof, there's no on or off or under buttons. It's either on or it's not. Recently, I've been using the X5 U3s. These are really cool. They turn any microphone into a wireless microphone. I've done another video on these on our YouTube site, so check that out if you want some more information and how to convert your Line 6 Helix into a remote connection. I keep my wireless with my microphone and I keep them in my gear bag. That way, if um, I need them, I know where they are. I can keep them charged and away from the singer. These go into their own little pocket inside the bag. Number four, strings. As a bass player, I don't tend to break strings that often. I try to change mine every couple of months, depending on how often I'm playing or recording. I keep a spare set inside the bag. Um, I'm using the Billy Sheen Rotos for most of my basses. I do have a P bass with the uh, Steve Harris signature series flat wounds. Uh, I don't mind them, but I really prefer these. I've been using these since oh, early 90s, I think, when they came out. Um, they're fantastic. What I tend to do with mine is I, as I change strings on the bass, I take the ones out of my gig bag and use those to change and put a clean set back in the bag. This helps keep them fresh. I don't know if they need it, it's just a habit I've gotten into. Number five, a guitar tuner. Now my Helix uh, Floor and my Helix Stomp both have guitar tuners in them. In my old pedal board, it's got a, a Polytune tuner on it. Sometimes you want to be able to tune up off stage when all your gear's on stage. So for that, I use these TC Electronic um, Polytunes. This is an awesome piece of kit. Very small. Connects to the headstock. And allows you to tune with it on the headstock. Again, pretty accurate, relatively cheap. I think they're around $80, $90 Australian. So like $3.50 US. Um, and I keep it in my gear bag. I put this towards the front pocket so that it is accessible fairly easily. There's also a Polytune iPhone app. I've been using that on and off. 
However, what I found was in noisy situations, you need to have a dongle or a iRig plug-in or something like that. Um, and the cost of that was more than the tuner. Number six, relatively important, guitar stand. Quite often if you're the first band on and you have gotta leave your gear on stage or you're finishing up at the end on the, as the last band, you need to have somewhere to store your guitar. I use these fold up, um, these are quite light aluminium or aluminum if you're American, um, stands. Very, very light, very, very compact, fit nicely in my bag and they're out of the way. If I need to use them, they're there. If I don't need to use it, it doesn't take up any room in my bag. I keep these in the bag. Just to the right. And it just sits there in the corner, out of the way. If you don't have the space in your bag or you don't want to lug one around, there's another option, which is going to be our item number seven. One. Item number seven, the towel. This is the most underrated piece of equipment in your gear bag. I use a small sports towel. They don't have to be very big. I use this for wiping the rock sweat off me during a gig, wiping the um, spilt beer off my guitar. One of the other cool things about this is, and I learned this from scottsbasslessons.com, so check them out um, for some more instructions on how to use them. Uh, I think it's one of his top five tips, it's a towel. Um, but you can use this as a temporary uh, guitar stand. Putting it through the handle of your cabinet you can then tie the rest of it around the neck which will hold the neck against the cabinet is it perfect no will it get you out of a bind absolutely i've used this a few times it doesn't take up very much space I'll leave it in the bottom of the gear bag I said, any towel will do although i don't recommend a beach towel it might not fit in your bag again on the message of saying self-contained i use a power board i'm in australia so this is an australian made power board um, I like these ones with the individual things so I can turn off and on and make sure everything's connected. Don't really need them, but this is a compact board for my use. I've got enough in there for my Helix, my wireless, my in-ears, and one spare that I can daisy chain to something else. This stores, again, in a front pocket in the gear bag. Out of the way, at the front, takes up no space, no worries. If I need a power board, I've got one. If I don't need it, it just stays in my bag. Number nine, a toolkit. Now, you don't need a whole spanner set and a whole garage of tools when you're on the road. You just need something to be able to change strings, adjust the intonation if you really have to. If you need to do something more importantly than that, you'd probably want to do it after you get through a gig. A toolkit could be as simple as this GrooveTech um, multi-tool. These are quite cool. They've got everything you need on it to do quick work. However, if you want something a little bit more substantial like I use, I've got a, a um, small storage box with a couple of key pieces in it. The types of things I keep in my toolbox for the road is a string winder. This string winder also has a cutting implement for, for nipping the ends off the strings. So I do need to change the string quickly. This allows me to get it off fast. This allows me to chop the end off without having to carry another pair of pliers or knife with me. Similarly though, I do have a pair of pliers. They're one of these multi-tools. Pliers, it's got um, a couple of knife blades, a screwdriver in it, and a bottle opener. <clears throat> Speaking of bottle openers, the number one tool in my kit is a bottle opener. Can't tell you how many times I've been to a rehearsal studio, gone to get a beer, and there's a bottle opener. So these are quite handy. Ah uh, yes, there's a pocket knife part of that as well. So yes, I'm doubling up on knives and bottle openers. I also carry a drum key. I don't use it often, but every now and then it comes in handy, especially if the drummer forgets one. Um, it's good for you to double up with the drummer and you know, he's got some of my strings and I've got drum key. Torch. Now, your go-to is probably going to be your iPhone because um, it's got a torch on it or your Android phone. However, it's very hard if you need both hands to hold the phone and do that. So the benefit of these small torches is they're pretty um, bulletproof, they last a while, but they also allow you to go a bit hands-free. I don't do it often, again, but sometimes you get stuck behind a rack or 
the back of the stage it's dark, you need something and you need both hands. I also have a ratchet screwdriver. Um, it's got a couple of different bits. The one predominantly used for is the Phillips head and that's for adjusting intonation. Um, I find the ratchet makes it go faster, um, but any screwdriver would do. I've got a spanner. I'm not sure what it's for, but I'm not ready to throw it out yet, just in case I needed it. And finally, I also have a handful of, of picks, plectrums. I don't use them really when I play. However, these are really cool to throw out to the stage. These have got my name on them. There's some branding on the front from a, a covers gig we were doing, a Reckless Audio. These go in here as well. They're made by Custom Picks, custompicks.com. They're an Australian company. They sell globally. They are quick turnaround, really good quality, um, various sizes, etc. Been using them for a while and I quite like them. So they all go in here as well. And then this, surprise as you say, goes in the bottom of the bag. So effectively in my main gear bag, I've got pretty well everything I need. So if I've got everything in my bag that I need, what could be the number 10th item? Hearing protection. Hearing is pretty important. Um, these days we play with in-ear monitors, um, so it's not as bad anymore. However, going to rehearsals or live gigs where you've got loud stage volume, especially not so much on the stage, but when you're in the audience waiting for your turn, it's good to have something to protect your ears. So I've got two types here. There's an Alpine one and a Flare. They're basically the same thing. These attenuators allow these to go in your ears and block loud noises, but let everything else through. So I can still play and hear what's going on. I just don't get bombarded by the loud volumes. So these are really important. I keep these at the top where they're really easy to get hold of. Because we use in-ears, number 10 also includes my in-ear monitors. So I've got perfect seals. I got these, they're custom ear molds. I got them at um, NAM in 2019 in Nashville. These were fantastic for the price, the quality, they're unreal. I've also been using Shaw SC425s, which you can get off the shelf. They're cheaper, they're relatively good. I really, really like these. When I had the opportunity to get any molds, these were fantastic. And going along with that is my uh, Mi Pro in ear body pack for my wireless in ears. So again, I keep this with the headphones. So if I don't have the headphones, I don't have the ear pack. Um, the worst thing you can do is turn up with one and not the other one. If I don't turn up with either, then I've got to find an alternative. And that's where I go with the other blockers. So number 10, hearing protection. Really, really important. Wow. Bonus time. Some of the things that didn't make the top 10, but I still think are relatively important, are I carry an iPad with me in most of these gigs. I either use it for controlling my in-ear monitors, for a song list, or I use it for band helper in our cover gigs where I haven't had to remember all the songs and I use it to refer to. So to keep that near me, I use a Hercules iPad stand. So this goes to a mic stand, allows me to connect my iPad and have it there. Now I can also use this to control our front of house. We've got the Allen Heath QUSB, which uses an iPad to drive it. So again, I can control the front of the house from my front of stage. Another thing that I find not necessarily important for me at the moment, but I have used in the past, is some form of fly rig. Now, some people use a Helix Stomp as a fly rig. I use that as my main rig. Some people use um, a DI pedal, like this radial DI pedal. This allows you to connect your bass into the pedal and go straight to front of house. So you may not get all your effects and all your amp sounds, but you'll at least get bass going to the front of house um, if everything else on the stage fails. Quite cool. You can also use one of the Tech 21 fly rigs. They're really small. Apparently they're very good. I've never used one, but um, other friends of mine have used them and think they're fantastic. Again, this is just as an alternative. In case everything fails, you've got something with you that you can use. And finally, the last bonus thing is batteries. Um, I don't use batteries for my wireless anymore. I've moved to the Line 6 G10Ss, which are self charging. However, my body pack for my IEMs uh, requires batteries. So I keep the batteries. I put those in a little backpack spot here to the side. Keeps them out of the way, out of the big pack. I don't really need them often, so I store them in there. Well, 
That's the top 10 things and some bonus items that I keep in my go bag as a bass player for recording studios, rehearsals, live gigs. Hopefully there's been something in there that you've picked up. If there's something I've missed that you think is more important, please feel free to leave some comments so I can add them to my gear bag or we can let everybody else know. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. We've got some other gear videos, live stuff. We've got some original music on there. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't, please leave comments and tell us what we can do better. Thanks for watching. Stay reckless.